Today we're going to be looking over everything you need to know in order to install a carburetor on an LS engine. The system that we're going to be using today is going to be the Smart Spark LS ignition system. This is essentially the heart and soul of the carburetor LS. There are a couple other modules out there that you can buy. There is also a way to program the factory PCM in order to do most of what this ignition box will do. When you buy the whole kit, you will get the remote mount to wiring harness so you can move that far away away from the engine because most ignition modules if not all ignition modules do not like to be exposed to heat in addition to the ignition module you're also going to need the factory coils the ones that i've been using for the last two years are these ls2 style coils these are also made by daytona sensors but you don't need any specific coils in order to make this work you can use ls1 coils truck coils ls3 coils it doesn't matter what kind of factory coil you use as long as they are in perfectly working condition everything should work perfectly fine. In addition to that, you're also going to need the factory wiring harness that comes on the coils when you purchase your LS engine. If you are buying it from the junkyard, make sure you take the coils, the coil brackets, and the wiring harness. This is a factory wiring harness that I redid the loom on to make it look a little bit more race car. And this is just a regular GM connector, which will plug in straight to the SSLS harness. If you look on top of the box, it has a bunch of different mode settings for the Smart Spark system. Typically, on a regular Gen 3 motor, you're going to run this system on mode 0. If you don't have the factory truck coils or if you are running a 58X system, you might have to move into mode 1, 2, or 3, depending on what it is. You guys can go ahead and look up the manual online, and it's going to tell you exactly what mode you're going to associate those settings to. Although the system does not use a mass airflow sensor, it does still use a manifold absolute pressure sensor or the MAP sensor. In my particular case, I tend to ignore the MAP sensor because I run a 2D timing table. For anyone wanting to run a more advanced timing table or if you just want to run off the stock settings, you're going to want to run the stock MAP sensor to this plug. This is a part number for the harness that works with the regular truck motors, but I'll have links to all of this in the description down below. Let's talk about the MAP sensor for a sec. So like I mentioned before, this is a regular truck harness. This will also work with LS1 and LS6 engines. So the plug that is used on this harness is the one that works directly with the regular truck MAP sensor. I have an LS3 style MAP sensor right here, and the plug is a little bit larger than the LS3 MAP sensor. But it's not going to work, so you're going to need to get yourself the stock MAP sensor that comes on top of the regular truck intakes. When you take that sensor off, there's a little grommet there that you can take off, and you can run a vacuum fitting to your, the manifold vacuum on your carburetor or on your intake manifold. Once you hook up the MAP sensor, and then you hook up the vacuum line from the MAP sensor to the intake manifold, you can keep the advanced table on zero, and everything should work perfectly fine. Once you hook up the MAP sensor, you can keep everything on mode zero, and the engine should start up and run and be perfectly fine. I mentioned before that I actually run a 2D timing table, which means I've actually connected my laptop to the smart spark system and i've disabled the map sensor in order to run a timing table that looks very similar to a mechanical advanced distributor i have a video on that and i'll leave the link in the description down below as well moving on to the sensor that you're going to need on the block itself you have the cam sensor on the back of the block in the gen 3 motor and if it's a gen 4 it's going to be sitting in the front the smart spark system doesn't care what kind of sensor if it's front or back but from the testing that i've seen if you use a rear mounted cam sensor they will have a delayed start time but aside from that everything else is perfectly fine the next sensor you're going to need is the crank sensor and that's located here behind the starter so your factory starter goes here and then you have your crank sensor right there the smart spark system is compatible with 24x and 58x reluctor wheels so it doesn't matter if you have a gen 3 or a gen 4 everything will bolt up and will fire up just fine these next two parts are pretty much self-explanatory. You're going to need the intake manifold as well as a carburetor. This one right here is the Holly split intake. For a typical street car, I would recommend the Edelbrock dual plane that seems to give you the most average power. If you guys are doing any kind of serious racing that you're gonna wanna probably go with the single plane, but it doesn't matter what intake, any carbureted intake that you get for the LS should work perfectly fine. The carburetor that I'm running in my personal build is a Proform 750 E85 carburetor. I have custom built this carburetor 
carburetor to run on a blow through setup on my 1975 Dodge truck. Before this, I had a Demon. Before that, I had a Holly. Before that, I had another Demon. Before that, I had another Holly. So it doesn't really matter what carburetor you're running as long as the carburetor is suited for your combination. That's all you really need to worry about. For cars that are mainly street driven, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a vacuum secondary carburetor. And cars that are gonna be seeing some street strip action or some just strictly strip action, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a mechanical secondary carburetor such as this Proform right here. The difference is that the vacuum secondaries will have a pod here and the mechanical secondaries will have secondary linkage right here instead. In order to go over the remaining components that we need in order to get this system running, we're gonna go ahead and jump on the boat where this system is going to be installed and then I'm going to show you the last couple things that you're going to need. The fuel supply is going to be another question that you guys are going to have. Basically, there are a few off-the-shelf fuel pumps that you could just pick up and install. I'll leave links to those in the description down below. For people that are coming from a vehicle that was originally fuel injected and they want to convert to a carburetor, that gets a little bit more tricky because you're going to need a bypass style fuel pressure regulator. But for 90% of the people retrofitting a classic car that used to run on a mechanical fuel pump, since the LS does not have a provision for a mechanical fuel pump, the easiest way to take care of that is to install an inline fuel pump. You can install an in-tank fuel pump as well, but those get a little bit more expensive and get they get a lot trickier to install. So if you guys are trying to do this the easiest way possible, an inline fuel pump is definitely the way to go, and that's how we ran our boat. Because my truck is turbocharged and it relies on higher fuel pressures, I ran an in-tank style fuel pump, but for the boat that is mainly running NA and runs on a constant fuel pressure of 6 PSI, an off-the-shelf fuel pump with the deadhead regulator is all you really need to use. Like I mentioned before, installation of the smart spark harness was really easy. You just need to hook up the cam sensor, the crank sensor, both sides of the coil, power and ground, and then you could also hook up the optional map sensor like I mentioned before. That's pretty much all you need to worry about. You'll know that the smart spark is powered on because you'll see that it flashes when the key is turned on, and you'll know that it's getting a cam and crank signal because the cam and crank lights will light up as soon as the engine starts spinning. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.